All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. And then as others arrive, we will uh, have them join in. I've got this event recording. Welcome everyone uh, on behalf of Dimensions and Travel. We are delighted that you are joining us today for this time a domestic trip. This is actually one of the first domestic uh, virtual events that we've done. Uh, we've had some wonderfully exotic ones, but we wanted to be able to offer a couple right here at home. So today we're going to be doing a land tour of Alaska. No cruising, just a land tour. And one that we're, is an American bluegrass experience visiting Tennessee, North Carolina, and Kentucky. And this will be with Globus. And this is the 17th of our virtual events that we've done, going to exciting destinations and unusual ways to see things. My name is Diana St. James, and I am one of the owners of Dimensions and Travel, along with Jill Romano. Uh, we've been in business for 42 years, and we miss traveling so much, and we know that you do too. And we feel like these virtual events are a wonderful way to go somewhere. And we've been delighted with the response that we've gotten to them. So thank you for coming. And if you're listening later on to the recording, thank you for doing that too. So uh, we hope that this will keep the spirit of travel alive. Before we get started, I just want to let everyone know, please stay in listen only mode. Uh, stay muted. That'll keep uh, ringing doorbells and barking dogs from uh, interrupting our event. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, please feel free to write in the chat box down at the bottom of your screen, and um, we'll answer them at the end. And you can put those questions in at any time, and we'll give you a minute at the end to add a question to. So today, uh, two new journeys, Alaska, and I love the name of the uh, other one, Bourbon, Bridles, and Bluegrass. Uh, and I can't wait to uh, get started with it. But first, I'd like to introduce my business partner and travel agency co-owner, Jill Romano, who will introduce our presenter. Take it away, Jill. Thank you, Diana. And it's so nice to see everyone joining us today. I am so pleased to introduce you all to Karen Wong. She is our business development manager for the Globus family of brands. We've been working with Karen for over 14 years and her knowledge and wonderful travel opportunities within their Globus, Cosmos, Avalon and Monograms programs combined with her personal travel experience continues to be a vital partnership for us. Through in-person and now virtual training, most often including access to Avalon Waterways cruise directors, tour directors and local guides, Karen has supported and helped our team at Dimensions and Travel to select the right trip for you. Karen, would you please share with our clients Alaska and the American Bluegrass Journeys with Globus? Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Diana and Jill, uh, for inviting us to participate and um, to do something a little bit different, a lot of fun, I think. And we're doing a lot of, I mentioned it to you earlier, what we call international domestic travel. So all of our sectors around the world are getting involved and they're doing travel within each of their own. So we're in the US and what, that's what we're doing. The picture you're looking at is, uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the company in a second, but the picture you're looking at is um, the Parthenon, not the one in Greece, but the one in Tennessee. And it was uh, built for the Tennessee Centennial in 1897. Today, it serves as an art museum. And I thought it might be kind of a fun way to get started. Um, so let's talk a little bit about us, Globus Family of Brands. We've been in business since 1928. And uh, so we're starting our 93rd year in business. And uh, we are located, our world headquarters are in Lugano. Uh, we are a family owned corporation, uh, started out as a mail service across Lake Lugano. And eventually it's like, well, if we take mail across the lake to Italy, why don't we take people? So that was the genesis of the company. And we started with Globus uh, Escorted and Cosmos Escorted programs and eventually went all over the world. We also have our monograms and our river cruise company, Avalon Waterways. 
Uh, today, we're going to be looking at the two itineraries and two programs. I'll tell you a little bit about them as we go through. So the first one is going to be Bourbon Bridles and Bluegrass. I'm kind of switching the order of this. And uh, Bourbon Bridles and Bluegrass. And then the next one will be the Ultimate Alaska and the Yukon Territories. So let's get started. But as is top of mind with everyone, it's like, well, what are we doing as far as the protocols and how are we traveling? Well, we wanna be sure you have a safe, warm welcome when you come off of your plane um, and you, we are, you're greeted by our people. You'll see somebody in red that says Globus on it. Uh, you will notice that we are wearing masks and that when your bags are taken onto the coach so you can go to your hotel uh, and your point to point, your luggage will be sanitized. And um, we do require that our team, whether they're the driver, the tour director, or the local guides, all have to pass uh, and provide all their documentation to us, their health documentation, and uh, their testing. All of that has to be done before they're assigned a departure. So that's really important for us. The second piece is blending cultural uh, areas, protocols with the social distancing. So the social distancing is very important, meaning that uh, we will maintain as needed the six foot distance wherever we are. And uh, we even try to do this on the coaches where we have um, small group dis uh, discovery departures where they're limited to 20 to 25 people. Uh, we also focus on our member guests, uh, member health, as well as our guest health, which I mentioned before, touching hearts, not hands, meaning that there are no more self-service, no buffets. Everything is table service and menus. So you won't be um, helping yourself at particular times or whatever. It wouldn't be any of that self-service. So that's one way to stop um, and to encourage people to just relax, enjoy, you can order, you don't have to rush up to the buffet or you don't have to go over and, and help yourself. So we do have a commitment to clean and we do clean at all of our tour stops. Uh, we do deep cleaning between each of the departures and we do uh, look to our customers and our uh, vendors, the hotel companies, the attractions as our partners as we discover the world of good health for everyone. So let's get started. Um, our adventure begins and we're going to start, there it is, there are the horses. And um, it's an eight day program, really kind of cool. And we also take in the music city in this. So we'll talk about that. We'll look at the itinerary first. And as you can see, we do start in Louisville and wherever the green is, that's the starting point. And if you see a number in a circle, that means the number of nights you're going to spend in that particular area. So we're gonna start in Louisville. Uh, we'll make a stop in horse country, a couple stops in horse country. Just think if you were there in May, the first week of May, it could be for the Kentucky Derby and everything that's going on. Uh, and a couple stops in Lexington, then we make our way uh, into the Carolinas and through the Smoky Mountains into Chattanooga. Um, and then we end in Nashville, Music City. So let's get started. Um, tell you about some of the things you're going to be doing. So we'll be going to the Old Friends Retirement Area. And what is the Old Friends? Well, there was a gentleman, there's a gentleman named Michael Bowen. He worked for the Boston Globe and he was a film critic there. And he had the idea that as horses got older, you know, they were still had a lot of value and he wanted to have a place for them to retire. Hence the old friends program. It was a new concept in, um, in the area. It was called equine aftercare. So in 2003, he um, took a couple of acres, had one or two horses. And today he has 236 acres with 200 horses who are retired there. They aren't all thoroughbreds, just only a few thoroughbreds. The rest of horses, as uh, ranches, et cetera, wanted to retire them, they would come to this area. And um, he has a satellite location that's located in Kentucky, but it 
is very interesting how it's all worked out. It's now become, now remember this only started in 2003. It has now become a living history museum for horse racing. And it attracts about, would you believe, about 20,000 people a year. So it's really a, a real cool way to learn about the horses in horse country and to take care of them at all stages of life. So um, we think it's a, a wonderful way to give back. Oh, speaking of giving back, we're also, look where we are in Kentucky, we have to go for the bourbon. And uh, we do take in Buffalo Trace. And Buff I don't know if you've seen it or not. Buffalo Trace, you've seen the brand, funny, but I was standing in line at Whole Foods uh, in my area and I'm out in the East Bay. And um, Buffalo Trace, there was a big display of it at, the, at one of the end caps. And it was really interesting. So I, of course, had to stop and look about, look at it and learn about it because uh, the owner, the original owner, Edmund Taylor, was a descendant of James Madison and Zachary Taylor. And he was considered the father of modern bourbon. It was really important because he, bought, he brought in um, a lot of, uh, re not restrictions, but regulations on how... Um, bourbon was bottled and handled. And he was actually responsible for what is called the Bottled in Bond Act of 1897. He was also a mayor of the area where it was located, and that's Frankfort in Kentucky. And uh, you'll have a chance to have tastings, learn about all of the distil distilling of the uh, bourbon itself. Uh, you'll also have an opportunity locally to try the foods. You see a hot brown sandwich up at the top there. That's sort of a takeoff on Welsh rarebit. And then at the bottom, spoon bread, which is a cross between cornbread and bread pudding. So you'll have a taste of the South when you go on this trip. You'll also be going to uh, seeing one of the other sites, which I think is really important uh, and exciting to see, and that we're really highlighting it. And that's the Museum of the Cherokee in South Carolina. So we've moved on now from Kentucky, we're in the Carolinas. And the reason for this particular uh, uh, museum is obviously to take in the artifacts and uh, to take in anything having to do with inhabitants of the area. It's to preserve um, the culture and to give more meaningful understanding to the Cherokee heritage. So you'll also get uh, how they were, you'll find out about the facility and also the educational opportunities there for students, for everyone. And you'll learn about that when you're there with a local guide. Now we come to another part and that is, anybody know where this is? I know you can't speak, but a lot of times when I ask this question or I can't hear you, you can speak, but um, I cannot hear you. But a lot of people go, that's France. No, that's the Vanderbilt. I'm sorry, it's not the Vanderbilt, it's the Biltmore Estate. I was doing another one earlier on the Biltmore. Um, and um, it's the Biltmore Estate, which is considered the largest privately owned house in the United States. So the family still owns it. It's still occupied by uh, the family. And it has 135,000 square feet. And it is a chateau but you'll have a chance to take a full tour of the area. Um, you'll also see the village and you'll have a lunch in the village there. Um, from The foods are from the organic farms that are in the area too, that are part of the estate. So you'll have a wonderful visit and take beautiful pictures of the area. What you see down at the bottom are a few of the area things that are important uh, when you're traveling with us, such as we use top-notch transportation, meaning there are standards that we have. Being a Swiss company, we've had these standards and we've put them in place, we've modified as necessary. And uh, that's really important to any company that we work with, or even obviously we have our own companies as well. It follows for the um, same thing with the hotels. Uh, we have VIP access to any of the sites that you're going to be visiting where you see something like local favorites, because those are some of the very special sites you'll see. And plus you'll have other included visits as well. Well, you don't have to stand in line for those because we have VIP access. We buy out the times for that. 
And a lot of people have always said, you know, do I really want to go on an escorted program or do I really want to explore it myself? Well, in times past, we've always said, I'm sorry. I forgot to do, I forgot to turn off my phone. I apologize. Anyway, uh, we've always said that if you leave the logistics to us, uh, it then gives freedom to the customers. So within the structure lies the freedom to enjoy the destination. And um, I think that's really important for everyone. So you can sit back, you don't have to worry about um, the maps and wondering where you're going from place to place and getting to places within certain time frames. So this gives you that opportunity. The local favorites that you see up here are a couple of extras that we've always added in, but we've never identified them before. So um, now we do, we kind of point them out to everyone. So you'll be aware of some of those local favorites. You just saw one with the distillery that I was telling you about. So off we go to the Great Smoky Mountains. Yes, we're going to do the national parks here. And um, it straddles the border between North Carolina and Tennessee and beautiful country area. Obviously, if you're there in the spring or the fall, you'll see this, otherwise it's beautifully green. Uh, black bears are in the Smokies and they're truly black. They're really, it's amazing. They haven't always been and they live about 12 to 15 years. And I just bring this up because it's really kind of important. Um, the males get to be about 250 pounds and you know they can get up to over 600 pounds as well. Uh, the um, bear population has gone down tremendously. And that's because bears have had access to human foods and garbage. So we are really um, uh, cognizant of this when we go. So we all be, make sure that we take care of everything and certainly not leave anything behind for the bears. But Great Smoky Mountains are just beautiful to visit and just another side of it here as we make our way into, anybody know where? Chattanooga. It's a prince, uh, pr most important city uh, east of Tennessee. And it is, um, Chattanooga's in Hamilton County, Tennessee. And it has a population of about 183,000 people here. So, but we're in this area because it was cr uh, critical to the American Civil War and the multiple railroads that go through here. So we'll be visiting with a local guide and you'll have a chance to see how important Chattanooga is as a central transit hub throughout the country and throughout the South in order to get goods from uh, all the areas. Then we move on to, uh, where are we? Anybody know? That's Ryman uh, Auditorium on the right-hand side. So we're in Nashville. Ryman Auditorium came into uh, its own as taking over the Grand Old Opry in 2017. It started in 1892, and it was started by a gentleman who opened it as a Union Gospel Tabernacle, and that was really kind of interesting. He also owned um, riverboats and saloons, and then decided to open a tabernacle as well for the music. Uh, that was a long time ago, 1892, and it took up until 2017 for it to then become the new home of the Grand Old Opry. Of course, we also have blues music here as well, and you'll have a chance to take in some of the entertainment uh, and enjoy Nashville. Here's another shot of it for you, and um, you'll go down to the music district and see some of the wonderful, all the neon that's there, amazing. And again, another shot of the Great Smoky Mountains as we leave this area. And I just wanna do something, we're gonna be going into the program and doing Alaska, but I wanted to put a shout out to Dimensions and Travel and all their support with the different programs we've worked with them on and I just want I'm pointing out just a few of the North America programs that we've done in the past years and we do have the classic lodges of the west this is one where it really has an emphasis on uh, Yellowstone and then we also had southern charms which would take in Savannah and Charleston historic cities of Canada and a lot of Quebec on this one 
And one that we've uh, already started again this year, we did it in November, uh, this last year, we did it in November for a couple of departures and it was called Canyonlands. And Canyonlands was a really special program to one of the agents that was, was with Dimensions in Travel. And she would take groups there. She had groups that were so important to her and to us. And we loved working uh, with Norma. And I just wanted to thank uh, Dimensions for Dimensions and Travel for all their business that they've done with us. And uh, we look forward to doing even more as the years come on and we can all get out and uh, travel again. But I wanted to share some of the uh, areas that we have visited here in North America together. There have been others, but these were the four that kind of stood out and uh, I wanted to share that. So our next um, program is in Alaska. And this is kind of a fun program. It takes in a lot in a very short period of time, 12 nights. And uh, we start in Anchorage and we end in Anchorage. So you can see that we go up to, uh, up to Denali and we make our way through Fairbanks, make our way all the way down to Whitehorse and all the way around uh, through Toke and Valdez as well as back to Anchorage. So you can see we have a lot of stops. We have a lot of different things we're going to see, but this, time that we're doing that we have for travel and doing it domestic travel um, is really wonderful because we have a chance to take in a lot of what we may not have seen before. I'm going to kind of revert back that canyon lands that I mentioned in the previous slide and we did it in November and we had a couple of, of uh, departures there. The participants on the programs were people who had traveled all over the world. They had been everywhere from, oh, from South America, from the Amazon to uh, the Himalayas, to Africa, to everywhere. But I will say 99% of them had not traveled in North America. So they were totally enjoying this. So this was a great opportunity now that we could take advantage of. So let's look, uh, there's our friend, the bear. He says, remember to stop for the buses and turn on headlights. So from Anchorage, we're going to be taking then our Alaska Railroad, uh, and that will go from Talkeetna. That was the little town that I mentioned there outside of Anchorage, and it will take us to the Denali Station. There's Denali, the highest peak in uh, North America, and a summit is about 20,000 20, feet above sea level. Um, Denali, a lot of people say, why Denali? What is the name? The name is from the Athabascan language. And it was originally designated in 1906 as Denali by the, by the uh, gentleman who found the area. But in 1912, the government came and became involved. And that's when it, the name changed to Mount McKinley. And it took until 2015 in the previous um, in the previous administration, and the name changed back to the original of Denali. So, just a little bit of history about it, and I found it to be very fascinating. It's the third, third largest peak, actually, in the world after um, one of them is Mount Everest. So, look, here we are in Denali. You're going to be spending some time here. You'll be going to the Science and Learning Center. You'll be meeting with uh, naturalists and you'll be having a short seminar in the area to learn about um, this particular wonderful country. And you'll also be having lunch in, um, in the center as well, the visitor center. You'll learn about all of the interactive, interactive um, exhibitions that are there for you too. Another part of what we're going to be doing is we're going to Diamond Tooth Gerties. It's the oldest casino in Canada. And it's uh, modeled after the, the theme inside is during the mother load, uh, during the gold rush, Klondike uh, gold rush area, era. And then I'm gonna go to the bottom here at the bottom. And I don't know if you know a man named Robert Service. He was the bard of the Yukon. And there's a plaque for him. 
You might know him if I say just a couple of lines from something that he wrote. A bunch of the boys were whooping it up in the Malamute Saloon. And I'm going to skip a line and go to back of the bar in a solo game set, Dangerous Dan McGrew. This is our poet. And you'll have a chance to learn about him as well. Uh, to bring us forward, then we are going to also spend time and learn about the brew in the 49th state and how important it is to the area and how it's a long tradition of brewing beer. It's an award-winning beer. You'll have a chance to have lunch here. You'll be able to take in some of the sights of the area. And um, it, from their rooftops, you can see some wonderful um, vistas of the Alaska Yukon area. You'll also see the Klondike Express. It's the largest and fastest catamaran in Alaska. It averages about 34 knots. It holds about 300 passengers. There's three decks. They have inside seating so you can stay warm and you'll be on board for a short visit. Uh, there are monitors everywhere so you'll be able to see your area as you go through um, the short cruise that you'll have there. You'll also be visiting Muktuk Adventure. Muktuk Adventure is um, similar to, well, they do a lot of the training just like they do for the Iditarod. And it's for, they do it mainly for the Yukon Quest. And um, they do it also, some of the, some of the um, dogs are in this particular area for Iditarod. And then there are other uh, kennels and training areas for the dogs themselves. And you'll learn about that. You'll also have a taste of the Yukon dinner here in the log cabin dining room. If you're there in the summertime, they'll also have an opportunity if time permits, then check out the canoeing and all the outdoor sports. There's our meal. That's the Yukon dinner. So let's look at where we're going next. We're going to Kluon National Park. Kluon is a um, is between Whitehorse and Tope in Alaska. So the National Park Reserve, beautiful, uh, was a reserve in 1972. It's a settlement of Native American land claims. Covers about 8,500 square miles. And um, the Champagne and First Nations uh, covered the Eastern portion of this area. It borders uh, British Columbia to the south. So it's just right there on the edge. The other part is most important, you can see, and it includes Mount Logan. Mount Logan is the highest peak in Canada. And uh, you will have an opportunity to learn about this, but you'll also have an opportunity to learn about the animals in the area. So the sheep, this is probably one of my favorite, are here. You'll see some of the animals as we go further into our uh, itinerary, but everywhere, I think the animals are pretty magnificent as we go through this program. So as we recap all the things we're going to, look at all, everything you're gonna be doing on this. It's pretty busy. You'll have Iditarod headquarters, so you'll learn about that and how they have, um, where, you know, how they've won and how it's participated. It happened in 2020, believe it or not, in February of 2020. Obviously, I don't think it's happening this year. I haven't heard anything, but it will be again in February of 2022. Uh, Alaska Railroad, one of the most popular areas to visit when you're there, and Denali National, which I mentioned before. Uh, you'll also have a chance to go to the Klondike Riverboat, and Klondike Riverboat, you'll have a chance to visit this. The ship was donated to the Parks Canada and restored um, in 1966. So really important historic site that you'll visit here. One of the other areas you're gonna visit, anybody know what that is? That's the Alaska Pipeline. It's like, why would I do that? Well, it's been interesting to see because it's a natural gas pipeline and it goes from Alaska to Alberta. I think we've all heard about it for many years. It was commissioned in 1977, and it uh, is pretty amazing. It uh, goes from Prudhoe Bay, Alaska passes through to Dead Horse, 
And you've heard about Valdez, so you'll be have a, have a chance to go to the Valdez Museum. Remember, there was the big oil spill up in Valdez. And let's look at what else. Depending upon when you're there, you could be a witness to the Northern Lights. These are the Northern Lights over Anchorage, not necessarily out at Whitehorse. Whitehorse, you'll have obviously an unobstructed view, but um, or Bow, which is even better. Uh, but I just wanted you to see it from the viewpoint if you happen to be in the city when it happens. And what's the timing for that? That's between mid-September and late April, and it peaks in March. In other words, when it's darkest, when the sky is darkest. So that's um, the Northern Lights. And what is the opposite? This is the land of the midnight sun. And believe it or not, on the left-hand side, as you can see, that's midnight. And so they get up to certain part, Barrow, that's the other one, gets up to 24 hours of light each day. So you'll have, um, depending upon the timings that you choose to travel on this particular program, you, pretty, you have some pretty natural uh, phenomenons taking place when you're there. So just to recap, Mount Logan, our animals with our bears, and I love these guys, the antelopes are there. So you'll have a chance to take in all the sites, bring a camera, just use your phone. They'll take wonderful pictures for you. So I'm gonna go through some housekeeping right now. And that is what we call guest acknowledgement. Guest acknowledgement is, because we've gone through our two itineraries, when you make a booking, what do we do at time of booking? Say you make a booking and, um, uh, you want to have your, you want to make a reservation, but you don't want to make a deposit yet. Whether you do it with deposit or without deposit, one of the things that's required, and this is new, and it's new because of all of the requirements we have for the government and different things in the industry that require information. So we just want to be sure that you provide your um, appropriate government ID name is on. Um, your passport, whatever is whatever you're going to be using, your driver's license, that's what you need. Most likely you're going to be using your passport. We also want emergency contact information. See, we did this normally. We have been doing this for how long? Uh, and we've done them usually later in the process of a reservation, but we're doing it on the front end. And then you just need to scroll to the bottom of the page and check that you uh, have read the terms and conditions. So that's just a process. Um, just taking care of business on the front end instead of on the back end. And just a couple things that we're able to offer you is Globus Go, which you can load on your phone. And once your, your documents are um, issued, which is about three and a half, four weeks prior to the date of the start of your program, you will be able to go to your phone, go to the app store, look for the Globus Go uh, link and then download it to your phone. From there, you'll be able to see all your documents, day-to-day -day itinerary, all the optional things that you can do. You'll also have maps of the area, right? and you'll know what's around me, just like you do on your phone day-to-day -day here. And uh, you'll also know about shopping hours. Um, you'll know about restaurants, times, price ranges, museums and attraction, and the hours that they're available, and any entry fees or whatever. That will also be included. So, and another really cool thing is if you're out and about and you're in Alaska or you're in Kentucky and you're walking around and, or you've been to um, the Biltmore Estate and you're walking around and you want to know how to get back to your starting point, you can look on your phone. And if it's to your hotel, you will see a little lodge and you'll tap on that and it will take you back and walk you back to your hotel. So you get walking instructions. The way it works, you don't need internet. It's all push technology, just like Waze is that we use now. So uh, promotion that we have for North America and Europe, you don't have to deposit till March 1st, you get 10% off. We are offering, offering an additional um, incentive for you. And that will be as long as you make your deposit in the next couple of weeks. and. Uh, the details of that are going to be with Dimensions and Travel. I'll be sending it out to them as soon as I finish this presentation. And you can contact any of the agents there for additional information. So 
here uh, are your contact information, the email address, as well as the telephone number, and any of the agents will be happy to help you. And just to wrap it up, what to expect when traveling with us, so that all of the travelers have been screened, temperatures have been checked, we're diligent about all the touch points, including your luggage, your hotel, everywhere you go. Uh, we minimize close contact and we encourage you to please bring your own mask. We will have them available for you. We will have the Purells and all of the sanitizing equipment available on the coaches as well for you. And um, I believe that's it. I think that we'll take care of, if I missed anything, please let me know in your questions and uh, happy to help and thank you. And these are all little guys from the Canadian, just into the Canadian border in Alaska. I thank don't you. know who, what he is. I've been trying to research and inform, but he is in um, the Alaska area. I thought it was so cute. I wanted to share it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Karen, for all the fascinating information that you gave us on two places that might not have been on our radar. And I hope everybody considers them for uh, a, a next vacation, a, a wonderful, two wonderful domestic escapes. Now, Jill, do we have any questions to address? We do not have any questions at this time. I did put a message out. If anybody wants to type in a question, please do so. Karen's here and available. And uh, again, just a reminder, your Dimensions and Travel Travel Advisor would love to talk with you about any of these travel opportunities. I can't wait to go, my goodness. that bluegrass and oh, yeah. that whole area my gosh Karen just one more fascinating stop after the other I love the Grand Old Opry so I'd love to go back to Nashville again one day but uh, wow a little bird feasting and some horse racing and we're set to go yes. <laughs> we did a similar trip to that when I was a kid and I had much different interests back then <laughs> <laughs> love to go as an adult and uh and try adult beverages and have some wonderful adult experiences uh so i i think it sounds like a great trip too karen i i think so as well i was looking at it and it was new this year in our undiscovered program for north america so it was um really exciting to be able to share it with you and with your um your participants today wonderful thank you all right. Well, I think uh, we don't have any other questions. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, and we will be getting the recording link out to everyone who wasn't able to attend today. And uh, if you are here and you want to forward the link on to a friend, please do that. And know that we are standing by for um, uh, next week. If you'd like to give us a call um, or send us your, your travel advisor an email, we'd love to chat with you more about travel. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. And take Thank care. Bye-bye. Thanks Bye -bye. again, Karen. Bye-bye.